Is Bitcoin being manipulated? Just six days ago, everyone was celebrating as Bitcoin once again reached $72,000. That same day, a report came out saying that Bitcoin hedge fund shorts reached a new high. Bitcoin crashed 5% that same day. That's kind of odd. Overall, Bitcoin has crashed over 8% in less than a week since that report came out. And let's not even talk about altcoins because it's been a bloodbath. The majority of them are down between 20 to 30%. If you've been feeling the pain of these losses, you're in the right place. In today's video, we're going to dig into this hedge from report and uncover the truth about what's really going on. We'll look at the patterns behind why we crashed so hard in the last week and pinpoint exactly where we are in the current bull run cycle. By the end of the video, you'll have a clearer picture of the forces at play right now. And I'll be covering exactly what I'm doing with my portfolio for the rest of this year so that we can make as much money as possible during this bull run. So last Friday, we hit a high of $72,000 and you can see exactly what happened soon after. But what the majority of people don't know is why this happened. So this is a report that came out showing that hedge funds were setting new records on short positions against Bitcoin. So I believe this is the original tweet here posted by Zero Hedge. And you can see the chart here that goes all the way back to 2018. And you can see in 2024 how it's basically already been at new all-time highs for the entire year. So it's really nothing new. So is it a coincidence that this report came out just as Bitcoin is nearing its previous all-time highs? I think not. So one of the reasons that a lot of people were probably setting themselves up with some short positions was because this week there was a lot of things going on. We had the inflation reports and a Fed interest rate decision meeting. Now, what a lot of institutional investors also do is that they hedge their long-term positions. So for example, with institutions now buying billions and billions of dollars worth of Bitcoin, as we continue to reach those new highs, they will probably continue to hedge their bets in case that there are corrections to the downside, they can offset their losses with these short position hedges. Now, as more and more institutions buy Bitcoin long-term, we will see this chart get bigger and bigger. And every time Bitcoin pumps, we will probably see it get a little bit smaller again and then once again, start growing. So one thing is that as Bitcoin goes up higher, these funds are gonna wanna cut their losses on those short positions. Once Bitcoin begins to consolidate again, once again, they begin to hedge their long-term position. That's much easier to just open a short position against Bitcoin rather than actually selling your long-term Bitcoin. For one, if you're dealing in probably billions of dollars, you're gonna lose a lot of money just on slippage alone because as you sell or as you buy, it affects the price of Bitcoin. So if you're selling billions of dollars worth of Bitcoin, you're gonna be sending the market down. So if you start selling at 70,000, by the time you end, you might have lost another thousand or $2,000 on the price. Do that a few times and you're probably losing millions and millions of dollars just on buying and selling. So instead of selling the asset, it's easier to just open a short position against it if you think that the price might drop in the short term. Another thing is obviously a tax benefit. If you're going in and out of positions in less than a year, then that tax is going to be a whole lot more expensive while opening short positions can actually benefit you with taxes. So again, as more and more institutions continue to buy Bitcoin, we're going to be seeing these charts here get larger and larger and larger because that's just what hedge funds do. Now, yesterday, inflation numbers came in lower than expected, which led to a massive rally for Bitcoin going from $66,000 all the way up to $70,000 in just a matter of hours. But the rally didn't last long. Bitcoin quickly retraced the entire move by the end of the day, a five and a half percent drop. So what happened? So one interesting thing that I found here, going all the way back to the beginning of this year, we have had four different Fed rate decision. In January, leading up to the FOMC meeting, Bitcoin dropped by three and a half percent. In March, it dropped by over 10 percent leading up to the meeting. And in May, it dropped by over 12 and a half percent. So our five percent drop leading up to the meeting actually wasn't that bad when we look at the last two. Now, another thing that I noticed is that after every drop that leads up to that meeting, we completely retrace the drop and go up. So we saw it happen back in January, saw it happen back in March, and even saw it happen back in May. And if we look at the last few days, you can see that we did retrace the entire move back to the upside from where that drop started, but then we retraced it all the way back down. And now we're sitting all the way back down here at this big support level. So the good news is, 
this is a big support. And even if we lose it, we have another Fibonacci retracement level right here, right around $65,000 and another one sitting right around 64. Now, something that could be seen as bad news in the short term is this right here, potentially a double top pattern. So if this is indeed a double top pattern, that would mean that this is probably the neckline right here where the support is. So the way that we would figure out our target to the downside, if this played out, we would measure the range that Bitcoin Bitcoin's been trading in basically between 66,800 up to 72. Then we put it at the neckline, which gives us a target of about $61,500. That would be about an 8% drop. So I'm trying to think worst case scenario here. I think that's more or less where we would be, which fits in with the range that we've been trading in within the last few months. It also fits with the overall Bitcoin halving cycle phase that we're in right now, which is phase four, the post halving accumulation. Now, while things might seem a little bleak right now, especially if we do get this double top pattern that plays out and we drop back down to 62, $60,000. A lot of people are waiting around saying, what happened to the Bitcoin halving? I thought, you know, Bitcoin was going to go to the moon. It was going to hit 100,000, 200,000. Well, fear not because we're actually ahead of schedule of where we usually are by this time. When you compare this time's Bitcoin halving cycle to the previous one. Remember, Bitcoin had never broken an all time high before, before the halving. And We've already done that. So let's take a look at exactly where we are in the Bitcoin halving cycle. So the Bitcoin halving cycle comes in four phases. We have phase one, which is the pre-halving accumulation. Then we have phase two, which is a pre-halving rally. This typically begins around 60 days pre-halving. And you can see that we actually started much, much sooner than that. Then phase three is a pre-halving pullback. You can see that during that time, we did pull back. We had about a 23% pullback. And then where we are right now is phase four. This is a post halving accumulation. And although it doesn't always happen like this, where we pull back beyond whatever the pre halving pullback was, it has happened before. So we just kind of treat that as part of the pre halving pullback. And then here we're just expecting accumulation. So the range here is between 60,000 all the way up to our all time high, which is around $73,000. And historically, this is exactly what Bitcoin does. We just kind of accumulate in this range here for about three months before eventually going into phase five, the post halving rally. Now, if you don't believe me, let's look at what happened during the last halving cycle. So this is a 2020, 2021 cycle. We can see in 2019 leading up to 2020, right? We were in phase one, the pre halving accumulation where Bitcoin's price just kind of consolidated for a while. Then we had an outlier event, which was the COVID crash. If you guys remember that. And then after that, Bitcoin rallied for seven weeks straight until hitting phase three, which was the smallest phase three of all time, basically 14 days of its pre halving correction. Then this blue line right here, that was a Bitcoin halving. And look what happened for the next three months. Bitcoin hit phase four, the post halving accumulation, and we just consolidated in this range before eventually at the end of July, going into August, we got this big move up, consolidated a bit in September. And then quarter four, what happened? The rest is basically history. We had the massive rally all the way up to what eventually would be our new all time high at $69,000. Now let's look at the previous Bitcoin halving before that 2016 2017 we're gonna see the same exact patterns guys phase one pre halving accumulation phase two pre halving rally you can see bitcoin moves up for four weeks straight phase three the pre halving correction we can see the pullback here phase four post halving accumulation you can see the big accumulation zone here we actually had this phase four accumulation zone for about 147 days which was twice the amount of days in 2020 2021 you could also see that we had a pullback beyond the phase three pullback similar to what we're seeing right now and basically you can see here once quarter four hit things really started to take off and I mean you can see here the rest is history right new all-time highs at twenty thousand dollars one year post halving so we're seeing the same exact pattern play out right now guys this is why I'm not too worried there will be consolidation in this range at least for another month after mid July going into August then we could start looking for a breakout here into phase five which is a post halving rally but before that I'm really 
really not expecting much. I'm expecting Bitcoin's price to continue to range here between $60,000 all the way to $72,000, $73,000. Personally, I believe that the rally is really going to begin in quarter four of this year. During the last Bitcoin halving in quarter four, Bitcoin went up over 253%. That's from September to the end of the year. Even though in 2016, we had a longer than usual phase four accumulation area, Bitcoin still went up over 63% in quarter four. So I'm personally thinking that the same thing is going to happen this year. So what I'm doing right now is basically still dollar cost averaging, believe it or not, even here close to all time high. History shows us that this is literally our last times to accumulate Bitcoin and all the other altcoins at current prices, because by the end of the year, everything's going to be a lot higher. And by next year, we'll even be higher than that. So is Bitcoin going to continue to consolidate here? Yes, I believe so. Will Bitcoin be higher by the end of this year than it is right now? Yes, I definitely believe so as well. Will institutions continue to short and hedge and potentially manipulate markets with these type of reports? Yes, I believe so, because it is a harsh reality, but not only in crypto, in all markets. By understanding the full picture and knowing how historically Bitcoin's halving cycle has performed time and time again, we can better position ourselves for long-term success to make as much money as possible during this bull run. Now, one way that you could potentially stay ahead of the curve is by utilizing AI in your trading. This is something that I've been testing out lately as AI driven hedge funds have outperformed traditional hedge funds by more than 300% over the last three years. Check out this video where I programmed an AI bot. I gave it a thousand dollars and then I let it trade crypto for seven days with no human interference. The results were actually shocking. So if you're not adapting your trading with AI yet, check out this video right here to see what you're missing out on.